Is this the new ChatGPT killer? This little known AI tool may be exactly what loan officers need to grow their business. And use this tool to generate content at scale, analyze large amounts of data, and make your life easier. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Claude AI, a powerful AI that's taking the world by storm. Now, you may have heard of ChatGPT, but let me tell you, Claude is a game changer. First off, the recent updates to Claude have significantly improved the quality of its outputs. It's like having a super smart assistant by your side, ready to tackle any task you throw at it. And when it comes to analyzing data, Claude is in a league of its own. Just the other day, I used Claude to analyze the recent 108 page NAR proposed settlement document. Can you imagine how long it would have taken me to manually go through all of that information? Man, I would have hated that. But with Claude, I got a concise summary of the most important topics in a couple of seconds. It even broke down the impact on buyer's agents and what it could ultimately mean for loan officers. That's just one example of how Claude can save your time and make your life easier. Whether you need to create engaging content for your clients, or quickly digest complex information, Claude has your back. Here's the thing, Claude isn't just a solid alternative to ChatGPT. In many ways and at many things, it's even better, especially when it comes to content creation and data analysis. It's like having a secret weapon that gives you an edge over your competition. So if you want to streamline your workflow, impress your clients, and stay ahead of the curve, you need to check out Claude AI. Trust me, it's going to change the way you work. So let me go show you exactly how it works, and I'll show you how I even did the 108 page document summary from NAR. All right, so if you haven't heard of Claude AI, this is a tool by Anthropic and it has been around for a while and actually has been something that I've been using for probably about a year now, but their recent update, Claude 3 is game changing. They just made an update, uh, looks like March 4th here. Basically, this is the next generation of Claude. And, and I, I talked about this being a ChatGPT killer. It may be, right? We'll see. I think ChatGPT is coming out with a new version as well. So it's going to be an arms race with AI, but let's check it out here real quick. What is Claude 3? So let's take a look here. There's three different models of the Claude platform. We have our Haiku model, we got our Sonnet model, and we have Claude 3, which is the Opus. Claude 3, the Sonnet version, is the one that is available uh, on the free plan. Uh, I use the paid plan, which is 20 bucks a month. Opus is ridiculous. It is so good and it puts out content. It analyzes things great. It, it just does a really good job. It is a little bit slower than the Sonnet version, but it, it is putting out massively uh, amazing content. And we'll walk through uh, how to use it. We're going to compare it to ChatGPT, see how it does. And so you guys can see exactly what the use case is for this. So I still like ChatGPT when it comes to creating personas, uh, teaching it about your business, things like that. But when it comes to large data analysis or putting out content uh, and I specifically I'm talking about like scripting and long form uh, social media content that is going to be the best and even maybe blogs and things like that it's just gonna sound more natural so let's jump in here some standards for intelligence right so they did some uh, comparisons to the other models and as you can see here Claude 3 the opus version is beating every other model right GPT 4 Gemini Ultra Gemini Pro it is beating everything graduate uh, level reasoning grade school math uh, they still not use I mean this is a large language model it is not a math model model. And so it's not really designed to do math, but, uh, and it can do it pretty well, right? So, so you can see what it can do. It's so much better. And it's giving you near instant results. What I'll say is the Opus version take a little bit longer. Uh, but as you can see here, Sonnet is two times faster than Claude 2 and Claude 2.1. What I like about this new version as well, um, is that it has fewer refusals. One thing that was really frustrating about the original version of Claude or not the original, but Claude 2.1, which is the previous version was that, uh, there was a lot of refusals, random refusals for things that it thought was harmful, but it weren't they weren't harmful right it was, was kind of weird so uh what this what i found was this one has much less uh capacity to do that only about 10 percent are refusals i personally still haven't gotten any refusals but on the 2.1 version i did have some refusals which is kind of annoying uh, it has improved accuracy it's just a bunch of crazy things that you can do uh so you can see and it has huge long context and near perfect recall so this is one of the things like i said it has a much better capacity to analyze large document sets than ChatGPT does um and it has a much larger context window that it can actually access this information from and for anybody who's like what are you talking about luke basically what that means is it has a better it does a better job of accurately taking the information in large documents and distilling it into accurate information it doesn't forget stuff in the middle because some of these models will actually forget stuff in the middle they'll usually remember a lot of the stuff at the beginning and at the end of the documents but uh in this case you can see it's actually really good throughout the entire model um so let's go ahead and jump in show you a little bit about what these platforms look like i'll show you some use cases on how you as a loan officer can use this or really anybody that's watching 
watching this uh, could use these platforms to uh, help them put out content, analyze documents and things like that. So the first thing I'm gonna do is walk through the NAR settlement, right? Obviously NAR is a big thing right now. The proposed settlement just came out uh, a couple days ago uh, as I'm recording this on March 22nd. It just came out, right? And so it's a hot, hot topic. So the other day I posted on social media that I analyzed this document and put, uh, and, and it put a summary. What was funny is I actually had a bunch of loan officers rip it off and take it and create it as their own. Totally fine. AI made it, but you know, kind of funny how it worked. So I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. So first things first, you need to have the settlement. So let's go ahead and grab that. All right. The National Association of Realtors Settlement Agreement. You can find that online. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask it to analyze the document. So again, I'm using the chat, uh, the Claude 3 Opus model. Analyze the attached settlement document. Give me the most important information on how this affects buyer's agent. I'm actually going to show you here without you having to wait. I'm going to show you here what this actually came out with. Based on my analysis, gave me this. Key points. The NAR agrees to eliminate any requirements that listing brokers may make. Blanket, unilateral offers of compensation. Again, it's using this sort of high level language. What is the impact on buyers? Right? It gives you the settlement amount. It gives you uh, buyer brokers need to have a written agreement before they are able to show homes, which is something that's not done. No one's really talking about that. So here's how you can stand out from everybody else. Be a voice of reason. Be a voice uh, of actual knowledge versus just a bunch of misinformation that's going around there, right? So, uh, and brokers cannot represent their services as free, right? This is something that should have never happened, but it was happening, right? What is the impact on buyer's agents? Okay, well, buyer's agents will no longer be able to see compensation being offered to them on the MLS listing. So it's giving me this summary based off of a simple prompt. It's analyzing this and it's probably already ready over here. It's starting to come out. See, look, this is what it looks like. So you see each of these outputs is going to be a little bit different uh, and you may need to change up your prompt here. I'm over here running low on credits because there is a, a credit limit on the Opus model right now because it is the most powerful and the most expensive, uh, but it is only 20 bucks a month for this plan. So uh, what I did next was say, give me a detailed analysis that would fit into a two page document. So instead of it just being an outline, now I've created it into a two page document, settlement agreement analysis. Cool. Introduction, key points, just really breaks this down into a little bit longer context, but still real simple and easy to understand. What's the impact on buyer's ages and compensation, increased contracting requirements, restrictions on marketing practices and potential impact on revenue. Here's a conclusion. You could have just uploaded this in a Google doc or anybody on your socials. I just put together a summary of the 108 page document. If anybody wants it, drop a comment and you could have sent that to a bunch of people. I saw multiple people doing this and getting a ton of engagement. Super, a bunch of people were super excited about it. Then here's another thing you could do. I want to turn this into a blog. Can you please make this into a 1500 word blog? You could say stuff like an SEO optimized 1500 word blog. What I would actually do differently here is I would turn this into a blog outline first, and then I would write each of the sections separately. Cause I do find that when you break it up into its own sections, it's actually going to work considerably better than if you just ask it to do the whole entire segment at the same time, right? So I would have said, all right, introduction, what are the other the understanding the settlement and have the different points and then you can say expand on this, right? So you can see here, it puts together a actual blog post, it's just a more long form adapting to the new reality to thrive in the wake of NAR. So you could have put this up on a website or, you know, again, you want to edit it. I could say, hey, you want, know what? I want this to be a social media post that is engaged and has a really good compelling hook. Should be about 250 words or less. Attention buyers agents, the game has changed. The recent NAR settlement agreement is set to shake up the real estate industry. If you're not prepared, you could get left behind. Here's what you need to know. Say goodbye to unilateral. Okay. So again, you could have made a post like hashtags, but pretty cool. It's actually a pretty decent post. I would remove some of these emojis as well. What are the possible implications of this settlement for loan officers bend on buyer's agent? Wow, we can keep going with this. Look at this, the NAR settlement agreement. So as you can see, there's so many ways. Do you think the loan officers may have to diversify their lead and referral sources? Yes, I believe that loan officers may need to diversify their lead and referral sources in response to the changes. We don't know what's going to happen. Obviously, there's a lot of misconceptions going on. But again, the idea with this specific thing is to show up as a leader, show up as an expert. Understanding these documents is going to be really hard if you sat there and read through the entire thing. Obviously they're using legalese, all that kind of stuff. So this will actually help you stand out as a leader. Let's try to do the same thing in ChatGPT and see how it works. Again, I'm going to go ahead and grab this document and I'm going to actually just copy this because show you what that looks like. Exact same prompt. And it does a pretty good job. So again, you can use ChatGPT for this. Does it, it just looks a little different, right? The outputs look a little different. And I'm going to go ahead and grab this right here. Give me a detail. So once it's ready, we're going to go ahead and uh, ask it this question. So this is really doing an in-depth uh, analysis. So again, you can use this uh, to do this. I find that uh, Claude does a better job of the actual writing and, and structure and stuff like that. And this isn't that large of a, of a piece of document. So this will actually take a, a larger document. So Claude will actually take larger document sizes, but 108 pages isn't like a huge amount for these, uh, for these plots. Um, so again, this is what it all looks like. So now I'm going to do the same thing. Give me a detailed analysis that would fit into a two page document. So this one was a little bit more detailed, right? Um, where, oh, but look at that. They're doing the same process introduction. So another thing you could do here is well, I'm actually going to just keep following this process. You see how powerful using these AI tools is for something like uh, analysis, uh, giving 
some some breakdowns onto these large form documents. So like you, you can think about this from the perspective of like you know these new uh, handbooks that come out or new updates that come out uh, for for different policies for specific programs. You can do the same thing. Break it down, make it simple, make it easy to understand. I want to turn this into a blog. You make, uh, I'm going to show you exactly what this looks like. Probably going to speed it up a little bit in post editing uh, just so that um, you don't have to sit here and wait for it. Uh, but as you can see, unpacking the landmark settlement at New Dawn for real estate commissions. A groundbreaking settlement that reverberated corridors of the real estate industry. It's not a bad, it's not bad. The genesis changed. So, all right, so here we are. This is the blog that it came out with. Um, and then this is what Claude. So the real, the real estate industry is on the cusp of change driven by a recent settlement agreement between the national. So I find that typically this does a better job. So let's actually do this last one right here. And what I may do is I may link these doc, this in the, in the description below so that you can see the differences and you can compare yourself, uh, which one you like better. Uh, but you can see here, see, this is where I find, this is where I found, find that Claude is a much better, does a much better job of writing uh, a good, you know, it's just, they're much better at creative writing from my perspective. This is more like wordy, verbose. I don't know. It just, it just feels more like blog type content. Both love hashtags. They both love emojis. That's what this tool can be used for. Um, so now let's move on to some other strategies, right? What other ways can you use to really get good uh, information? So next thing we can do is we can actually, I've put together a list of viral hooks, 100 and 337 hooks, viral hook templates that work really well. So what I'm going to do is I downloaded it. All right, look at this. We got the viral hooks template. Analyze document and analyze the viral hook templates attached. I want you to break down the tonality, um, structure, any other information I think I should know about uh, hooks. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna analyze, and again, I'm gonna speed this up and edit. All right, so what, what can you do with this as a loan officer? What we can do with this is we can say, off of your analysis, viral hooks, I want you to make me um, two, uh, 10 hooks about why consumers. I would put more thought into this if I was uh, really making this because you wanna give it context, enough context. It's not necessarily gonna know why it makes sense. It's going to start to take information from its training in order for it to come in here. But let's see, thinking of buying a home, but worried about high interest rates, here's why it still makes sense and how to get the best deal. Three reasons why buying a home in a high interest rate market is still a smart investment for your future. Don't let high interest rates scare you away from home ownership. Here's how to make it work for your budget. Warning if now is the right time to buy a home. Here's what experts say about purchasing in a high interest rate market. These are pretty good. Five strategies to your dream home, even when interest are high. Number three might surprise. High interest rates got you feeling hopeless about buying a home. Don't give up yet. Watch this first. These are great. These are great hooks, right? So if you were to just go in and put the same exact, um, uh, if you just put this prompt directly into uh, to Claude, it's not going to work as well because it's not, it's pulling from its entire database versus pulling from a specific data set, right? And in this case, we know this data set is viral uh, hooks because again, I compiled this list from a viral hooks uh, website, right? So let's check this out. All right. So, all right. So this is kind of what you can do with there. Now here's another strategy. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and show you uh, YouTube videos, right? So one thing that you can do, analyze the content of these YouTube videos about the recent release of Claude 3 platform. Give me the most important talking points of context. So I actually went and went to YouTube, go to YouTube and find anybody that you want to, uh, let's say we want to do Matt Wolf. He's got a bunch of good AI content. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this. Let's do this one. I'm going to grab this. I'm going to go over here to YouTube transcript generator. I'm gonna plug it in right here. Now it's actually going to pull the entire transcript over here. I'm gonna hit copy. Now I can paste it over here and say, analyze it and give me the most important information, right? So if you want to, uh, you know, you have maybe a video that you wanted to watch and you don't have time to watch it, it's on YouTube. You can actually grab the transcript really easily, analyze it, give you information, use it to create video scripts, do all kinds of stuff, right? You could also use it to, to learn a new tonality, right? So let's go look over here. I'm actually doing a video on the proposed NAR settlement. And what did I do? I uploaded it here, right? What I did too is I I pulled one of my favorite YouTube guys and I actually, Adam Earhart, one of my buddies as well, uh, I pulled a bunch of his transcripts and I said, you know what? I want you to analyze this document with video transcripts and then tell me the elements of the video, sentence structure, tonality, language patterns, complexity of the language, and anything else you think is important to craft high quality YouTube video script. It gives me the analysis of this. And now I can say, okay, I want to put together an introduction hook, putting together for loan officers on how to use Claude AI, and also really talk up the benefits of Claude over ChatGPT. I used a lot of this script. I changed it up a little bit, but I used a lot of this script in the intro today. So as you can see, um, this is very powerful way to generate high quality content, right? If you have the right data, those are the main ways that you can use. Another way you can do this copywriting Bible. So if you have a lot of content that you like, I'm going to upload this copywriting Bible again. This is a, this is a document that has 
uh, a bunch of, right, it's got a whole bunch of viral script that I've worked in the past. This was put together by a guy. So here's what you could do is you could put together your own list of posts, of social media posts, of the, the style that you like. You can find your favorite author, whatever. You can use this for so many things, but really the, the most powerful thing about Claude is, is this, is creative writing and, and, uh, uh, and analysis, right? You know, it's something that is going to help you do things that are a little different than ChatGPT. I use ChatGPT a lot for uh, ideation, for things like that. But when it comes to actually putting out content, I typically will go to Claude because I find that Claude does a much better job of really understanding my voice, but also just putting out more natural sounding content, right? ChatGPT does sound like an AI, sounds like a bot. Claude, and Claude does have some of those uh, inclinations as well. It does like to use uh, Unlock, Unleash uh, somewhat as well, but it's just not quite as noticeable and you can edit it pretty easily. Ultimately, this comes down to the amount of data that you give it and the better data that you give it, the more likely it is that you're going to get uh, the results you want, right? And this is the same thing with ChatGPT, the better data you give it, but it's not gonna do as good of a job of taking these large data sets and, and really distilling that into sort of digestible information. If you really like this video, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you got value, I mean, really what, I, I mean, what I'll say is, this is one of my favorite platforms right now. Claude is, is amazing. It is really game changing when it comes to this stuff. So again, if you want more videos like this, if you wanna see more of this AI content, again, I'm doing this for free. I'm putting this out here because I want you to see what's available so you can be more efficient, so you can use these platforms to be more effective in your everyday life. Uh, but again, drop a comment below if you have any questions, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, all of the YouTube thing. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.